Good evening, good evening, everyone. How are you guys doing this evening? If you can hear me, just give me a yes in the chat box. I see you guys are coming in slowly but surely. Welcome, welcome, Grace. Welcome, LaShawn. How are you guys doing this evening? Hello, hello. <laughs> All right, so let's jump right into this evening's class. Are you guys ready? If you're ready, just give me a yes. Wonderful, wonderful. All right, can you see my screen? If you can see my screen, just give me a yes as well. Wonderful. All right. Okay, so this evening's we're doing trend lines and time. And we're basically looking for the relationship between trend lines and time. Okay, so let's go directly to our chart. As you can see, I have an MT4 uh, account up here. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to look for the relationship between trend lines and time. All right, so we are on the euro dollar, US dollar chart. We're on the one hour time frame. Um, I like looking at um, peers that trade within the European and US session. Do you guys have any other peer in mind that you'd like to look at? Because as you know, I like to use whatever you guys prefer to look at. So if you have any other peers in mind that are within the, uh, let's look at peers within the European session and US session. Okay, so I saw G, GJ, GU, UJ, uh, GU would be within the European and US session. So that's pound, US dollar. Let's look at pound, US dollar. Uh, pound USD. Good. So this is the pound, US dollar. So let's use this one as our example for this evening. Okay. Now, if you guys have been present in my sniper entries class, which I believe was one of the first classes that I did. Um, upon my return. So it should be in the vault. You guys can always go back and look at that. But the first thing that you want to do whenever you look at your chart is establish your trend. Okay. You got to have an idea what the market is doing, what direction it's moving into. Right now, I made this very small. Let me see if I can make it a little bigger. Okay. Let's look at it this way. Right. Um, Let's try to see if I can make it a little bigger. Okay. All right, let's look at it. Let's look at this wave, this one right here, right? Now, a lot of us don't necessarily understand what trend looks like. So when you draw a trend line, there are two ways in which you can draw a trend line. You can draw a trend line from the lowest low, and we do this in most cases, it's from the lowest low, all right? So you can start from the lowest low, and this is a trend that we have here, right? And you can extend that trend into the future. I'm just gonna array that. Right, you can extend that trend into the future. Now, another thing that you can do is whenever you're drawing a trend, you can actually create a parallel, a parallel line for this trend. And that's normally how you do it. Now, this would give us the major trend, right? When we create this parallel line, because we gotta put this on the highest point that the price came to, and we would get this trend that we're looking at, okay? And if you look at this, you can see that we have somewhat of a trend 
developing here. Now, a lot of us don't understand that, that trends are segmented. They're normally in two parts. So you have um, a more bullish part of the trend and you have a more bearish part of the trend. It's normally broken up into two, right? So if I'm to take this same line, push it into the future, and I'm to take this and bring it up towards the middle area, look what we got. We got our upper part of our trend, which is the more bullish part, and we have the lower part of the trend, which is the more bearish part of it, right? So this is a, a main trend. This is one of our major trends, okay? Now, inside of this major trend, we have smaller trends. We have uh, short-term trends, if you want to look at it that way. We also have pattern formations, if you also would like to look at it that way, okay? So what we're going to be looking for whenever we see price develop a trend is we want to be able to identify where we're going to be getting signs of volatility right so this price was moving to the upside we need to identify this trend as well right so how are we going to identify that trend um, let's see where we can find price connecting okay, let's see here this looks like a nice area. Let's see if this matches anywhere else. Okay, kind of matches here. Kind of matches here as well. So this could actually be our trend right here. Now, I know a lot of us think that when we're looking at an uptrend, we draw the uptrend from the bottom. That is not always going to be possible. From experience with trend lines, you will know, you will notice as you go along that it's not always possible. And what helps us to identify a trend is the first two touches, right? So the first two touches, we have this one and we have this one over here. That's the first two touches. So this would tell us this is our trend, okay? Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna copy this. I'm just gonna try to draw another line over this. Try to do this perfect as possible. Oh, I don't think I got it. Let's try it one more time. Okay, I almost got it. I think I got it. Okay, so I'm going to take this and I'm going to try to bring this down to the bottom, right? So I'm gonna bring it on the wick. We could also drop it, let it touch the body because we can have trend lines drawn wick to wick, body to body. We can have trend lines. Um, if you have a perfect trend line at the top, you can actually take this and bring it to the body or you can bring it to the wick. So trend lines are observed in different ways. I like to observe my trend lines on the wick and I also like to observe my trend lines from wick to body, depending on how the price is moving, right? So we have this, and this shows us that we have an uptrend. Remember the trend line, the trends are also segmented, right? They're in two parts in a lot of cases. So I'm gonna try to draw another line. All right, and this is gonna give me the middle part of my trend. Right, so I'm gonna put it here like this. Let's bring it from here, good. I'm gonna bring it like this. And this gives me the two parts of my trend. So this is telling me that my price is a little bit more bullish to this area. And then we go into the bearish section of the trend, okay? So we have an uptrend. And in that uptrend, at the beginning, we have another uptrend, which is on a lower degree. Now, inside of that uptrend, we can now look for pattern formations, right? So here we have, let's start from this area. Here we have price from a high to a low, and it is creating what we may want to look at as 
Let me just remove this ray. Let's change the color of this line. Let's use different color. All right, and we're getting a pattern. Who knows what that pattern is? Can anyone tell me what that pattern is? Anyone? Just let me know what you think that pattern is. Gives you guys two more seconds. Okay, Grace says pennant. Okay, so yeah, you could look at this and call it a pennant. It's not quite a pennant. It's more like a wedge formation. Um, I like looking at all triangle looking patterns as just basically um, a squeeze pattern, a contracting pattern. Okay, so I would look at this and I would say that this is a contracting pattern. And with me seeing a contracting pattern, I'm going to be expecting some sort of explosion, right? Now, this pair is um, in the European session and the US session, right? So the time aspect of it, I'm going to be looking at the um, open of the European session. I'm going to be looking at the lunchtime of the European session. I'm looking at the beginning of the US session as my areas of potential entry, right? Now, what I want for an entry, I want the price to touch the trend line, okay? Before I get into my trade. So I want to see the price hit the trend line and close. So once the price hits the trend line and close, let me make this a little bigger. Once the price hits the trend line and close, I'm going to be looking to enter my trade, right? So for example, the price came down here, it hits the trend line, it closes, it closes as a bullish candle, I'm going to look to enter to go long, right? So we have two scenarios here. We have one where it hit the trend line of the pattern and closed bullish. We could have gone long in that case. Uh, we have another situation where it hits the trend line, the main trend line of the um, trend, the major, well, the um, lower degree um, trend inside of the major trend. And we could have gone bullish at that point as well, okay? What I like to look for is anywhere inside of this time slot between the open of the European session and the open of the US session. Anywhere within that time, I see price hit a major trend line or a minor trend line. I'm going to look to enter on the close of the bar that hits it. So if we're in an uptrend and price hits that trend line, I'm going to look to go long. I'm going to look for a reason to go long because we're in an uptrend, okay? In this case, it may be a little bit more difficult to get involved in this move to the upside because um, this trend was established um, after all of this price action was created. So for us to actually be able to catch this trade, we'd have to go back some more in the past, right? So if we're going back some more in the past, what are we going to find? Let's see here. Let's compress this price data. Okay, this would be a trend like this. This is another trend here. Let's see what this looks like. Okay, that's a totally different um, pattern that is forming there. So we'd have to be looking at the move down. Let's see, where can we find our trend? Could our trend be from here, like this? Yeah, let's see. Okay, it's looking bright so far. I'll use yellow. 
because these are the lines I'm using for my trend lines. All right. So this is what we have. We have this, these two swings creating our potential trend, right? Now, if you look carefully, this is price moving to the downside. And usually when we're looking at a downtrend, we would draw the trend line from the top, right? Now, it's not always going to be clear being able to draw the trend line from the top. And in situations where it's not clear like that, we can simply look for um, a situation where we can draw the trend line from the bottom. And we can simply copy that. I'm just gonna try to clone this line. And I'm gonna take that line and I'm gonna bring that line over here like that. So this was our trend, as you can see here, nice clean trend. Now, if you remember, trend lines are also segmented. So this is a downtrend and this never broke that high. So it's still in the downtrend. So this downtrend could actually be like this. Right. So this could be our downtrend that we're actually looking at. So if this is our downtrend, we have price moving down inside of this formation. Okay. Um, we could also put in another line. Let me just put in our segmented line. We can put in our segmented line and that line would have came in somewhere around here. In this case, it would have been here. It could have also been in this area here, right? So we could have put in our segmented lines. In some cases, you could have more than two segments of your channel or your trend, but generally it's going to be two. So we can use this one like that. I could even extend this line, but I'm not going to need this one much because the price stayed on the bullish side of the uh, channel formation, right? So I did not see a reason for us to um, get involved in this trade yet, but let us see if we can find one. This trend line that I have down here, this yellow trend line down here is the bottom. Um, let me see here. This piece of price action doesn't show me a reason for us to get involved with this formation over here. However, if we are to look at this by itself as a squeeze pattern, normally squeeze patterns pack a very big burst of volatility. So if you find a squeeze pattern like this and it is completing itself at the open of the US session or the open of the European session or the lunchtime for the European session, anywhere inside of this time slot between 2 a.m. Eastern Standard and 8 or 9 a.m. Eastern Standard, once you see that squeeze pattern breakout, you would be best jumping inside that formation and trying to catch the move either with the explosion to the upside or the explosion to the downside. And those of you who understand uh, pennants or triangles or wedges, you would understand that if you have um, price making a move to the upside, this would be your impulse. This would be your correction, and you'd be looking for another impulse to the upside, okay? So this would be actually a nice area for us to go long. It is happening at um, approximately 2 a.m. Eastern Standard. And if we were to look at this bottom trend line here, this one here, this bottom trend line, price came very close to it, 
it came very, very close to it. So as much as it didn't quite hit that bottom trend line, you could see that price wicked at that area with it creating that wick. That wick tells us a lot. With it creating that wick and closing um, higher, closing outside of this squeeze or contracting pattern formation here, this gives us a lot of confirmation that we could be looking for an explosive move to the upside. Okay. And with this formation happening at this point inside of this downtrend, it is also indicating to us that we could be looking at what could be a potential breakout right so here you can see we caught that breakout to the upside and as price went up here created this new high and the day came to a close price went into con uh, correction or consolidation and we can now establish that we have two swings so we have swing one we have swing two these are the highest points that price came to and once we connect these two swings and we clone that line, we would be able to put it connecting the this swing over here, uh, creating our potential channel. And our channel will look something like this, right? So we'd have these two swings being connected. We have that same line being put over here. And that would give us our channel to the upside. So with us being able to have a channel to the upside, what we'll be looking for is what happens when price hits the trend line. We can segment the trend to the upside by creating this middle um, line here. And this middle line could be a line that you use to connect um, the most likely areas where you find the touches. So here you can see we have, it's, it's a wick. So we have a body touch, we have a width touch. So we can actually use this trend line once it connects to these two areas here. We can say, okay, this is potentially that area where we are having a segmentation happening, where we have the bullish part and we have the bearish part, okay? So with that being said, let's look at what happens when we approach 2 a.m. Eastern Standard. As the price develops, we approach 2 a.m. Eastern Standard. And look what happens. The price hits this middle segmented trend line. And once the price hits this middle segmented trend line, what happens? We can see another explosion of price to the upside. Okay, so we have another explosion of price to the upside. Now, with us getting that explosion of price to the upside, look what happens over here. Price comes and hits this trend line that we drew. It hits this trend line over here and it stops. So once the price hits that trend line, we will see the price stop because it is telling us that this is the trend that it is following, okay? And once it hits that trend line, you will see price die off, goes into another pattern formation if we were to try to outline this pattern formation, it's going to look something like this. Let me just try to change the color here. All right, let me just create this pattern formation for you guys. We have another squeeze pattern formation. With us having another squeeze pattern formation and we're with us being at this segmented uh, trend line, it means that we are at an area where we have a very high possibility that we can see another explosion to the upside. And what look what happened. We did see with price hitting that trend line at 2 a.m. Eastern Standard. Upon the close of that candle, we have a bullish candle close. We can jump in, go long. And as you can see, we would have been able to catch some more um, pips to the upside. Okay. Now, this same trend line that we drew down here, connecting these two swings, copying that trend line, bringing it to the top where we got our first swing. And with us placing that trend line here, you can see that we have another swing from this pattern, the explosion from this pattern, hitting that trend line and stopping. 
So this is telling us that we are potentially in this um, bullish trend to the upside. It is moving more sideways, but channeling to the upside. Okay. And with it channeling to the upside, you can see us getting another corrective move. So at the end of the day, we're getting another corrective move. There you go. So you can see that we're getting another corrective move here, right? So with us getting this corrective move, let me just try to draw this as perfect as possible. Good. So with us getting this corrective move to the downside, here you can see the price came and hit this trend line and it's hitting this trend line approximately 2 a.m. Eastern Standard and look what we are able to find. We found, let me just make this a little bigger. We found the price closing below that trend line. So price is closing below the trend line. And let me just try to make this as perfect as possible. Let's clone this. Okay. So price closed below the trend line. And this is potentially the pattern formation that we were looking at. We can see price closed outside of that pattern formation. We can also see price closing below that pattern formation at 2 a.m. Eastern Standard. It is also outside of this um, smaller trend to the upside. So we can look at this and say, here, we're getting a breakout to the downside, okay? So with us seeing this as a breakout to the downside, we can enter this short. We can enter this short at 2 a.m. Eastern Standard. On the close of that candle, we can enter short. And as you can see, price goes down, it hits the next segmented trend line. Okay, which is this one copied and placed here. As you can see, we have price connecting one, two, three, connecting in that area with us placing that trend line here. We can see that price came exactly to that area and stopped once it hit that trend line. Okay, so this would have been a nice trade for us as well. And if you're looking to get into the market, Again, after price came and hit this area, we are still inside an area where we can look to go long, okay? However, if you understand the Elliott wave theory, you would understand that after you get an impulse, you're going to get a correction. And trading inside of corrective formations is not exactly um, advised because if you look at what corrective formations look like, they are very choppy, as you can see, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down. It's very choppy, right? So the impulsive side of the trade is generally stronger and smoother. So this allows you to make more profit quickly, okay? Instead of being caught up in all of the chop, okay? So with us looking at this as an impulse to the downside and we're getting a correction to the upside, we can actually trend that move to the upside from this low and we can trend this. Right, so I'm gonna change this to, I'll leave it in pink. Okay, I'll leave this one in pink. And I'm going to try to copy it by just tracing over it. It may not be very perfect, but I'm going to try to make the best of it. So this one, I'm going to connect this one to body. So you can see here from the body, it hits this wick. And you can see it's, it's well respected. Okay. I can even make another copy of this and create my segmentation. All right, so I can even create my segmentation like this. 
And you can see this one is also well respected. Okay, so what I'm gonna be looking for is how the price reacts inside of this channel to the upside, okay? I could have created this channel uh, anywhere from around this area from here and being able to project and uh, predict most of this move to the upside, okay? So this is how early I could have created this channel. As you can see, we have this one and we have these touches over here. So I would have been able to create this trend line and project it above. So this is an uptrend, which is intended to be a correction. And I would have been able to take this line, put a copy of it over here, and also create this segmentation over here, right? So as you can see, look at how we would have been able to follow price. We would have been able to follow price. This is 2 a.m. Eastern Standard. On the close of the 2 a.m. Eastern Standard candle, it hits this uptrend line. So with it hitting this uptrend line, this is an area where you can go short. You go short, price comes down, hits the bottom of the trend line, you're out, okay? Because it's in a channel. It could be bouncing back and forth, back and forth, okay? So once it comes down, hits the bottom trend line, closes inside, you need to exit. Once it closes inside, you exit, okay? If it's closing inside and it's inside of this time slot here, which is between 2 a.m. Eastern Standard and uh, 9 a.m. Eastern Standard, we can look at 9 a.m. Eastern Standard. Once it's between 2 a.m. and 9 a.m. Eastern Standard and it closes inside of this trend, we can actually, actually look to buy once it bounces off that trend line. So we can buy, and once it hits the top trend line, you're out again, okay? So here you can see that it did push up a bit aggressively. We did get price closing above. However, it did pull right back into the trend. It did kind of break the bottom a bit and pulled right back up into the trend line, okay? So with us having this, um, situation where price closed outside. If we did create, let me see here. It's the high. I'm trying to draw these trend lines as accurate as possible. All right, so here you can see it did break out of this trend to the downside. And with it breaking out, we also saw that we had a breakout of this um, minor trend to the upside as well. So it is happening at 2 a.m. Eastern Standard when we saw that breakout. And if we did enter to go short in this situation because we hit the trend line, but we closed outside, um, this is a case where I would not be too excited to go short. And the reason why I would not be too excited to go short, even with a breakout, is that this is a strong move to the downside, right? So this is one, two, three. This leg is longer than this leg. So this is potentially a corrective, impulsive wave to the downside. Notice that it never broke this low. So it came down, closed outside, and we had a green candle close. And this candle basically looks like it closed almost back inside of the trend, okay? So if we did enter to go short in a situation like this, our stop would have to be somewhere right around this area here, right? I like putting my stops, um, if I enter inside of a move, for example, all of this is, is already happening and I'm entering inside of a move. I like putting my stop at least um, behind the second candle high if I'm going short, right? So this would be my first candle. So this is, this is my entry. So this is my entry bar high. And then the previous bar, this is the high of it. So the highest point of these two bars, that's where I'd like to put my stop. So if the price comes back and stops me out, then I'm going to say, okay, we're not going short.
And by then, I would know for sure that it's possibly not looking to go short. So with it coming back, taking me out, I can say, okay, I'm going to go along with this one because this is probably just an overshoot and price is going right back up. Okay. And this is exactly what happened. Price went right back up, hits the upper part of the trend line. At that point, I'm definitely looking to exit my trade, especially once I get a close inside of that trend. Okay. Any questions so far? Anything you guys are not too clear on? Give you guys a few seconds, shoot your questions. No questions for me? Okay, I'll give you guys a chance to type up your questions. I'll come back to the chat box. So if you have any questions, just type it up. Submit it in the chat box and I'll come back to it, okay? All right. So price went up, hits the upper trend line. As you can see, from this upper trend line, price came right back to the lower trend line. So if you're looking to go short at this time, you have a great opportunity to go short right back to the trend line, okay? Now, we're not looking to enter at these points. We're only looking to enter within 2 a.m. Eastern Standard and 9 a.m. Eastern Standard, okay? Anywhere within um, those candles is where we're looking for our entries, okay? Inside of these, inside of this time slot would make the best areas to be getting involved with trades, okay? Here, I'm not looking to enter. This would be off session. This is more in the Asian session. We're not looking to get involved in uh, the Asian session. Okay, so here it is again, 2 a.m. Eastern Standard. We have a candle hit the upper trend line and close. And because it hits the upper trend line and close inside the trend, we can now look to go short because it's hitting the trend line. Okay, we can go short. And as you can see, price came down aggressively, hits the lower trend line. We could have closed once this candle closed and exit and be done with this setup. Once the price comes, hits that lower trend line and close, we can exit. We can even exit once it comes and hits that trend line, okay? Now, if you're looking and you notice that it came so close to the upper trend line, then you can say, okay, so because it came this close to the upper trend line, you know, trend lines are not always going to be perfect in the way you draw them. So in some cases, you can look at it and say, okay, it came very close. So there is a possibility that we could actually be going to the lower trend line. Okay, so in a case like that, you can look at this area and say, okay, we hit the, um, we hit both trend lines for this minor channel and this major channel. So we could actually be going right back down to the major channel um, bottom trend line. And this is exactly what happened in a case like this. So in situations where you have both um, trend lines being hit at the same time or price getting so close to both trend lines, then you can look at this as an area of what we call confluence, which would mean that you'd get a strong move in the opposite direction. Okay, especially once the price closes inside of the trend. Okay. If you'd like to look for added confirmation, sometimes you may be able to catch the close of the red bar. Uh, but in other cases, sometimes kind of catch the close of the red bar. Sometimes it could be too late. That red bar could be very big in some cases. So your entry would be very late, right? So it's nice that if you get price hitting the trend line, closing inside of the trend, we can actually look to go short right away. Okay, you look to go short because it's bouncing. You're expecting a bounce off the trend line. And once you see that uh, bounce closed inside, you can say, okay, um, I can 
confidently look to go short because we're still inside the trend, we would most likely be looking to go in the opposite direction. All right, so here you can see what happened. Price came down, hits the lower trend line, and it kind of flip-flops around a little bit, but eventually goes right back up, okay? So this line that you're looking at here, this is the 200, this, this uh, line here, this is the 200 point moving average. It's a simple moving average. I find that this is one of the most effective moving averages. So I always have it on my chart and you can see that normally whenever price comes and hits it, it acts as some sort of support or some sort of resistance. As you can see here, it comes, it broke, it broke it here, but came back. This is gonna be acting as support over here, support, propping the price back up, it broke it, it act here as resistance, right back down, came back, broke it, this is support, and right back up. So I like the 200 point moving average, it works very well, and it serves as a very strong indication of support and resistance. It also helps us to identify trend in a lot of cases, but drawing your trend lines, looking at time, that would be your best approach. Okay, so be sure, try to be able to identify your trend lines as quickly as you can. The earlier you're able to identify a trend line, the better it will be for you. It will give you a lot of power throughout the course of your trading days. The earlier you're able to identify a trend. Because if you look at this and you're able to identify this little trend here as early as this. And what can help you is once you see the price makes a low, it makes a high, comes back, makes a low, then it goes back and makes another high, breaking the previous high, then you know that, hey, we potentially may have a trend here. So this would give you an area where you can look at it and say, okay, this is my base for my trend line. So I can connect these two swings and this would be my trend line. Take that copy and bring it to the, um, the high that you have here and you have a trend it would look something like this All right so you take this swing here connect these two swings copy the line bring it up to the top and you have a trend to the upside okay so try to be able to identify your trend lines as early as possible the earlier you're able to identify your trend lines, the better it will be for you. It will give you a lot of power in the market, especially when you bring it in with time. With me, as it relates to my entries, my entries have evolved a lot over time. I actually use an EA now for my entries. So in situations where I see price hitting a trend line and closing, I just turn on my EA and my EA will do the rest, okay? My EA will decide if it's gonna buy or if it's gonna sell, okay? So in a case like this, whereas if I'm doing this manually and I get a close outside, I'm looking to go short, right? However, in a case like this, I wouldn't, I wouldn't look to go short because I know this is one, two, three, this is the complete pattern formation. So I would be able to look at this and say, this is potentially an overshoot. Right? And if this is not an overshoot, I'm going to be looking for price to go into consolidation. So if it goes into consolidation, then I know that it's going to be making another move down. If it doesn't go into consolidation, then it's going to have to make another impulse up. Right. So these are the things that you're going to have to be looking at. With me using my EA, my EA would just um, look for a reason to enter the trade. It's either going to look for a reason to enter long or it's going to look for a reason to enter short. So if it went into consolidation, then the EA may be able to detect the next move, which is down. And if it detects the next move down, then I'll be able to catch the next impulse. If it doesn't go into consolidation and it goes up, then the EA will be able to catch the next move up and I'll be able to catch that buy trade, okay? Make that, that uh, next move to the upper trend line. All right, guys, so we're running out of time. Any questions? Anything you're not too clear on? Do you guys know how to draw trend lines?
Do you draw your trend lines anything different from what I just showed you? Grace, what about you? How do you draw your trend lines? Grace says normally from Wix. Okay. And the way in which I showed to draw trend lines this evening, do you think this is something that you can do? Grace also says, but the body is good. Yeah, drawing trend lines from body to body is not necessarily something that I like doing. Um, if it's going to be, let's say I got my lower trend line first, then my upper trend line could be from body to body, right? Because I'm just using the line. So if I place the line connecting the bodies together because the wicks may not be balanced, then that's okay. All right, guys. Okay, guys, thank you so much for your time. It's been a pleasure having you. I will see you guys on our next class. Thank you so much. Bye-bye for now. Have yourselves a great evening. Bye-bye. All right. I see someone says, I will do this. Thank you. Good night. Okay, you're welcome, guys. Bye-bye.